everyone and welcome to this very special episode India and Electronics Products Nation and we're talking about Make in India focusing on that very aspect. I, Kritsween Valia, along with an esteemed panel of speakers will delve into India's electronic manufacturing prowess, its positioning in the global arena, role of initiatives such as trade fairs and what does India need to establish its global domination. There is no denying that the organic growth in the electronics consumption in India coupled with the government's push and initiative has created a massive opportunity for the country to attract global giants and emerge as a manufacturing hub. In order to encourage manufacturing and draw in foreign investment, the Indian government has put in place several programs and policies, including Make in India and Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Phased manufacturing program, the PMP, and much more, several such initiatives which have allowed the country to grow its manufacturing sector. While the efforts of the government have made a difference, it is important for the industry to focus on working together and creating an impact. And this is where initiatives such as trade fairs become a critical tool. And so we have with us a panel of experts to help understand the industry and its growth. Please allow me to welcome the esteemed names. Mr. Tanmay Pol, Chief Operating Officer, Messe Munchen India. We also have Sanjeev Keskar, Chairperson, Executive Director, Electronics Product Innovation Consortium or EPIC Foundation and Chairperson Advisory Board, Electronica India and Productronica India. We also have with us Mr. Hari Om Rai, CMD Lava International Limited, along with Mr. Pankaj Mohindru, Chairman, India Cellular and Electronics Association or ICEA. Along with that, we have with us in the studios Mr. Sanjay Agarwal, President, Electronic Industries Association of India or LCNA. Before we proceed and delve into the depths of challenges and their counters, I want to get a sense of the industry and its growth over the years from all of you. Well, I want to begin with Mr. Tanmay. Uh, Mr. Tanmay, how do you see the growth electronics industry has witnessed in the past two decades? Let's begin with the basics. Well, thank you, Kritsween, for having me here. Um, if we look at the last 20 years, India has changed dramatically. Uh, the products that existed in uh, 2000s no longer exist. Many of them no longer exist. Uh, many of them have changed drastically. Take example of mobile, data, storage, or even payments for that matter. NPCI launched UPI in 2016, and at that time they had 100,000 um, transactions per month. Three days back, the story was they have crossed 10 billion transactions per month. Isn't it phenomenal? It requires a very robust tech infrastructure. And uh, let us underline the fact that there is some electronics behind that. So uh, Indian government is already pushing uh, Make in India and promoting domestic uh, manufacturing of electronics. Um, we have also seen the products which were imported earlier are now getting manufactured locally. Um, again, mobile is an example. Global brands like Apple, Samsung, they are produced uh, uh, locally. Mm -hmm. We also have homegrown brands like Lava, mm -hmm. right? And at the foundational level, India, Indian government is also promoting uh, Indian, uh, India Semiconductor Mission. And many of the semiconductor companies have already committed their investments in India, uh, which is one step forward. Uh, and um, uh, with the success of Chandrayaan-3, I firmly believe that uh, India will not only lead uh, the world in uh, developing, uh, in making uh, the products uh, and delivering uh, critical missions uh, very successfully. And uh, as Mr. Modi says, Yehi samay hai, sahi samay hai. Hmm. Yehi samay hai, sahi samay and fingers crossed for that, Mr. Tanmay. Uh, Mr. Sanjay, if I could come to you next, help us understand how the country has built and strengthened its electronics designs and how this can be leveraged to develop world-class products from India. First of all, from behalf of Executive Committee of Elsina and members of Elsina, I would like to give my compliments to MMI for organizing Electronica and Protonica India, which has become such a great show in the country that it is of a global scale and it, it attracts everybody to this show. India has now, under the able leadership of Prime Minister Modi ji, has defined that we have to become a global hub of electronic industry, electronic system design, manufacturing of core components and semiconductors. And we feel that 
this is the right time because India has to become a trusted partner because then only the global companies will get attracted towards India. Why India? Because we have a very large and young talent pool of engineering engineers, men and women, boys and girls all over and they are eager to join this uh, train of or you can say a space mission of electronic industry. There is a vast pool of women being working in our many companies in South India, in Foxconn, in S, uh, SGS, Sirma, and Cellcom, which showcases that our women are also leading the race and uh, joining the hands with the industry to become electronic industry major nation. Electronic in the components is a very complex uh, thing because every device needs hundreds of components, and those components need materials from silicon to steel. And we, we have complex uh, supply chains, and this supply chain needs to be developed uh, for this scenario. And also, we have very good policies coming from the government. And these, uh, that has encouraged a lot of investments into India. And we see likes of Foxconn, Samsung, Apple, and Delta, Delta Pegatron investing into an, uh, in India. And we have found that. We have companies like Dixon, Sirma SGS, and Cellcom, and many others who have become global hubs, global manufacturing companies in India. So India has a, at the right moment, and if we uh, catch this moment, everybody uh, attract, gets attracted to this, it would be a win-win situation for the country, and we will get a low-cost manufacturing hub in the country. Okay, so we're all in agreement to the fact that make in India Atmanirbhar Bharat, these visions, these policies have so far largely benefited us as a nation. All right, Mr. Pankaj, take us through how you were able to achieve this. What has been the role of the government, in your view, in positioning India as a favorable electronics manufacturing destination? I think in uh, electronic design, we have a long way to go. Uh, product design. Uh, we are just uh, beginners there in uh, electronic product design. And uh, the objective was first to scale up manufacturing to uh, 100 billion and then to 300 billion by 2026 and start building uh, product design along the way. Uh, we have, uh, you know, very good Indian companies now who have uh, started designing products of their own. Like uh, in mobile phones, we have Nava. In uh, air conditioning and uh, components, we have Umber. Uh, these are and other companies like Dixon, etc., are also setting up uh, design capabilities. So while it is happening, but we like a lot more to be uh, developed, and that is one of the focused areas of uh, our uh, uh, work at the moment. Okay, I want to go across to Mr. Hari Om next. Uh, Mr. Tanmay has already given a quick introduction of Lava. Lava has been uh, one of the flag bearers of mobile manufacturing in India. Uh, it would be great to hear the mantra behind your success and most importantly, what should be done in your view to create similar brands in the country. Talking about Lava, it's also for me, it's important for me to share that how this electronics and tech industry mm. are, are positioned. You know. Put together, electronics is about $2 trillion globally and tech also is $2 trillion globally. Right. So $4 trillion industry. When this compounds in, in terms of economic multiplier, it takes it to about 15 to 16 trillion dollar impact on the global GDP, mm. which means that, you know, it's about 15 to 20, 17 percent of the global GDP is impacted by the electronics and tech products. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, it is highly critical for our nation to make sure that not only electronics but tech products also we make in India and make for the world. As far as Lava is concerned, we are yet hardly 7% of the market. And it is a very small percentage in terms of, you know, what an Indian company has done. But amongst the Indian guys, we are still 70, 80% of the market. How could we differentiate ourselves is by doing certain things which nobody has done. For example, in the R&D and design, we are the only company in the world to have end-to-end -end product control from R&D, design, to supply chain, to manufacturing, and also in the downstream supply chain. We have a digital supply chain. For example, we sell our product from 120,000 shops. Each very second, you know, when a product is being 
sold out from a shop, we understand and that connects to the supply chain. So it's a very, very differentiated digital supply chain and a lot of other things we have built inside the brand, which is the character and the capability. But it'll take a long time for me to explain you know, those kind of things. So I think, but it is very, very critical. Nations are rich because they, are, they have their great companies. Tanmay, with the upcoming September 2023 edition of Electronica India and Productronica, I would like to understand from you how such twin trade fairs help unlock business opportunities for Indian product manufacturers and enable the growth essentially of electronics manufacturing ecosystem via establishing a robust supply chain. During COVID times in 2021, I remember we received one uh, letter through our partner association, Elsina seeking information about the component suppliers for producing, for manufacturing of ventilators, right? Uh, that was a national crisis time. So everybody came forward and tried to solve this problem. Now, these kind of problems exist at a company level in almost all industries, be it medical electronics, consumer electronics, mobile phones, defense and aerospace for that matter. As a trade fair organizing company, it's our purpose to enable meaningful handshake and unlock business opportunities. For that, we, uh, we work very closely with the buyer groups. We understand their requirement. Okay? We engage them with uh, uh, some of the best suppliers from across the globe in our buyer-seller uh, meeting. And uh, uh, that's how we do it. Okay, interesting. So you're essentially breaking down the entire pattern, the procedure, and what your vision is essentially when you're targeting an audience and ensuring that the message is sent across. Lovely. Uh, which brings me to Mr. Sanjeev. Why is it, Mr. Sanjeev, important for India uh, to become an electronics hardware product nation? And what, according to you, are some of the steps to increase this through designs and components manufacturing? Very, very key aspects. As we know that the consumption story in India for electronics is very strong. As per Ministry of Electronics report, last year we consumed $120 billion worth of electronics. Mm -hmm. And good part is with this production link incentive schemes, which government has launched for making India. Uh, earlier, the import dependency was 60%. Now we have reversed it. Now almost 70% is manufactured in India, and only 30% is import dependency. But one challenge I see is, Whatever manufacturing we are doing is, most of it is a low value add manufacturing. We are getting CKD kit, we are importing uh, kits and we are just doing the assembly work. So it gives us 15 to 20% value addition. Now when, as per the various reports, India is going to be $300 billion electronics industry, we have to also now focus on how we can improve the value addition in electronics from 15 to 20%, how we can reach to 50% or 60%. And that is possible by electronic component manufacturing, by developing products in India, for India, as well as for global market, because 40% value of any electronics is into components. 30 to 40% value is into IP and technology. So now our next focus has to be on developing component ecosystem, as well as designing products from India so that we can capture maximum value. And when the market will reach $300 billion, we can recognize higher value in electronics business. So it is very, very crucial to improve on the value addition. And good part is government has announced semiconductor policy with an investment of $10 billion mm. to create semiconductor manufacturing ecosystem. Government has also announced specs program for creating passive component and bare PCB industry mm. in India. So there are steps taken. We have so many successful startups which are developing products in embedded electronics. So I think with all these efforts, uh, we will definitely see a high value added electronics ecosystem evolve in near future. Uh, Mr. Sanjay, it does surely put things in perspective, but it also once again makes me want to ask you this question on where does India stand in your view in terms of components manufacturing and electronics manufacturing services alike? Uh, I would want to hear your thoughts on the same along with, uh, you know, if you could help us understand the need and the role of the organization such as Elsina in developing electronics manufacturing ecosystem. Uh, component supply chain is a very complex one and uh, 
we should understand that every component has every device has hundreds of components and which require a very complex supply chain and that is connected globally so we have to have a very robust ecosystem in india so that this global supply chain can be bought here and today at this situation we have 67% of our requirement is still being imported for components we are still not producing them however in the domestic we are still exporting 37% of our components overseas that means we have a robust manufacturing system so we what we need is to bring in these uh, the global manufacturing companies into the country so that we can have a robust supply chain and a very healthy supply chain locally available and we can compete with the world and with the poli new policies of the government i am sure the day is not far when we can have this dream come true okay that day is not far and once again fingers crossed for that uh, mr arium and mr pankaj a quick question to both of you all uh, want to hear from you on india's positioning in the global electronics manufacturing services as well how do you think uh, the growth and the trajectory of the mobile industry can be replicated and translated to enhance the same so you know everything is about fundamentals so let's understand we are 17% of the per capita of china it means that the moment we start manufacturing in scale mm -hmm. will be the most competitive in the world now with that we are not looking at only atmanirbhar bharat because that's a little bit of passive thought mm -hmm. we are looking at how can we serve the world world must also be dependent upon us and we must have a supply chain for example in mobile phones we are saying okay how can we have 50% of the bottom supply chain mm -hmm. made in india in the next 10 years and it is it is it is made so competitive that whatever manufacturing is happening outside of india that cannot be competitive without But the two are linked because only if you're self reliant will you be able to have others rely on you so we can begin with atmanirbharta and then perhaps have the world depend on us so it's a it's a completely you know we are we have a wrong notion that india is a large market hmm. we are hardly 3.3% of the global gdp which means we have a small market okay unless we manufacture in scale we will not be globally competitive so 97% of the market lies outside of india unless we target that market hmm. we can never manufacturing in scale and unless we manufacturing in scale we cannot be globally competitive so therefore the strategy has to be completely switched okay supply to the world and the bargain you'll also as a corollary you will also supply to india okay okay yeah. mr pankaj what are your thoughts on the contrary or alike mobile phone manufacturing has definitely given us scale because uh, we have crossed almost 20% of uh, global volumes of mobile phone manufacturing in india uh, value being 44 billion dollars so this is a reasonable uh, scale and it is encouraging global industry and uh, indian industry also to take up other verticals in manufacturing where we uh, have uh, the pli uh, kicking in pli 2.0 is kicking in in it hardware for laptops tablets uh, servers and uh, uh, hearable wearable we have the phase manufacturing program going on these are all a part of the 300 billion vision document uh, which is something which the nation has to deliver by march 26 we are very confident that uh, we are uh, the trajectory is good the tailwinds are very strong and uh, uh, this success of india's electronic manufacturing will not be only depending on uh, smartphone manufacturing but will be replicated by other verticals as i mentioned before okay i want to move on to mr sanjeev once again uh, would want to pick your brain on a major trend mr sanjeev in the industry that india has been working on tirelessly in the past few years semiconductor manufacturing could you briefly take us through the many efforts and its impact absolutely so india both in electronics as well as in semiconductor is really making big progress most of the global semiconductor companies have large captive design centers in india there is not a single silicon i think today which doesn't touch india when it comes to the chip design activity also if you look at electronics embedded design most of the global leading companies have large r&d centers in india and we are developing products for the world so now the focus is shifting towards manufacturing of these semiconductors and with government's policy we have seen the first announcement by a us company micron 
who is going to set up a ATMP facility in Gujarat. And I'm very sure in next six months, uh, we will see other major companies are coming to India for either wafer fabs or for ATMP packaging unit. So I'm very confident that with 50% incentive coming from the central government and most of the state's government are offering 20% incentive, electronics and semiconductor manufacturing uh, will be the next big thing happening in our country. Do you think the country should proceed to improve performance and how important are these conversations, especially among industry stalwarts? Absolutely, it is most important okay. because, you know, uh, when we are talking about $5 trillion economy, yeah. uh, ESDM, which is Electronic Systems Design and Manufacturing, is going to contribute $400 billion, okay. which is almost 8% of GDP. Okay, great. And that's why perhaps we're talking about this very important topic and I'm being joined by, you know, such an esteemed panel of experts. Mr. Tanmay, you mentioned how the previous editions of Electronica India and uh, Productronica India has enabled that. Could you throw some light on this edition and its differentiation and the factors that perhaps make sure that it stands apart? What initiatives have you taken and what can we expect at the upcoming edition in Bengaluru? So first of all, we we take industry's input in uh, curating the entire uh, exhibition. That's why we have partnership with all major associations, LCNA, IESA, ICEA, EPIC, IPCA. Uh, this edition is special because uh, uh, we are having this is one of the uh, this is the biggest ever edition of electronica and productonica india mm. we are having participation from over 600 exhibitors from 21 countries and what does it mean like hariyom ji mentioned about the importance of a very robust supply chain this gives an opportunity for the entire um, industry who want to source electronics to come and expand their supply chain um, we are introducing one very special initiative this, uh, this year, which is EVS Live. It focuses on solutions for electric vehicles. So there are over 100 and, uh, there are 105 exhibitors who will be demonstrating special solutions for electric vehicles. Uh, besides this, we'll be having a very focused buyer-seller meeting. Uh, so the India's biggest manufacturers are invited. They can engage into uh, one to one meeting we will have uh, we are expecting over uh, 2500 buyer seller meeting and then along with uh, mm, the associations we are organizing very focused conferences on semiconductor manufacturing display manufacturing pcb manufacturing electric vehicles and also uh, mm, like the theme of this session uh, making india as a product nation so uh, I, I welcome everybody, uh, entire industry to be a part of this largest gathering of electronics in Bangalore. Um, yeah. Okay, so block your dates for 13th to 15th. Uh, this particular uh, gathering event is going to invite a lot of conversation which can be taken forward. Well, that brings us to the end of the session and this very insightful conversation. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for taking out the time and enlightening us with your perception and knowledge. And to our lovely audience, of course, who joined us here today, do remember the September 2023 edition of Electronica India and Productronica India will be held from 13 to 15 September 2023 at the Bangalore International Exhibition Centre, Bengaluru. This edition, as you all heard, will bring together more than 600 exhibitors from 21 countries where the footfall of over 25,000 trade visitors is expected during the course of three days. Thank you for joining us. Until next time.